All right, so this is Princess. So we used to, um, you know, let people adopt rats, like, you know, a few years ago or something. So somebody actually uh, adopted her as a pet, and they had her for a couple of years, and uh, then apparently uh, the place where they lived didn't allow pets anymore. So they asked if we could take her back, and of course we said yes. So she's a really good girl, as you can see. She likes to get uh, head rubs, and uh, she's very calm and used to, uh, you know, hanging out on people's shoulders and stuff. So, anyway, Chung, what would you say is the main difference between uh, this kind of rat and a uh, Norway rat? Well, they're better coming, they're usually more active, and uh, uh -huh. um, yeah, they like, uh, yeah, like you to scratch their face. Well, I think female, female rats uh, are, both species are, tend to be pretty active. I mean, she's pretty chill, don't you think? Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. They are definitely better at climbing. They're better at jumping. You can see that the head is uh, more angular. Uh, the nut uh, muzzle is more narrow. She's got bigger ears and eyes and a big longer tail for her size. So she has a little white tail tip. We don't actually know uh, genetically what causes that. Some of our rats mm -hmm. have it and some don't. And uh, usually, um, if one of the parents has a white tail tip, then there's a high chance that the uh, babies will have it too. Um, but I think it's co-dominant, but we don't really know. So this is one of the things that we wish people would investigate. Um, and uh, one thing that I, I think I've noticed is that rats with white tail tip tend to be calmer and friendlier. Uh, than uh, the ones without the white tail tip, but you know, I, I, I don't really know for sure if that's true. Anyway, so she's, she's pretty typical uh, of the rats that we're breeding now. Um, she's probably a little bit uh, friendlier and, you know, and more used to being handled than most because obviously uh, if somebody's only got one pet rat they're going to spend a lot more time with that one rat than than we can afford to spend uh you know with any one rat here because we we have obviously more than one you know we're breeding them um but um you know if somebody were to get these i mean you you know we might allow somebody to adopt her i'm not sure because she used to be a pet but um, we are going to let people uh, like breeders and, um, and people who want to research this species get rats from us for free. And uh, if you do spend time with your rats, they're going to be like this. If you don't spend any time with them, they're not going to be as friendly and used to being handled. But that's really true for any animal. Um, you know, I mean, even if you got a fancy rat, if you just kept it in the cage, and never spent time with it, it's not going to be very friendly. Whereas, uh, you know, if, uh, if you take it out every day and play with it and get it used to being around people and associate you with good things, then it's going to be a friendly rat. And that's true with these guys too. They are genetically tame, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be friendly if you never spend any time with them. Um, but she's, she's very friendly because she used to be somebody's pet. Um, so again, um, as, I, as I've mentioned, these rats are free. They're going to be free for anybody who would like to get them uh, for breeding and for research. We're not really giving them as pets. Um, we used to, but we're not really doing that because, you know, they're kind of a... Um, uh, a more, I would say, what would you say, more like advanced pet? Advanced pet. Yeah. Like exotic. Exotic, advanced pet. People don't have a lot of experience with them. If you go online and you try to learn about how to care for a rat, that's not going to necessarily help you as much with these guys because these are a different species than Norway rats. They are arboreal. They are very good at climbing. They're good at jumping. 
They can be very fast if they want to. They can be very good at hiding. They were, they were traditionally known as house rats. So if, if they get free in your house, they're gonna be hard to recapture unless they want you to. Um, so if they, if they wanna come back to you, you, you'll be able to recapture them. So like this girl, I could probably take her into my house and let her free range a little bit. And I'm pretty sure I could get her back. But if you just get a rat uh, from us and you never handled that rat and you didn't spend time with it and you let it escape in your in your house, um, yeah, uh, you're, you may never see that rat again, but you'll see evidence of it because things will get chewed and your food will get stolen. Um, so, and that's kind of the lifestyle of a rat, you know, if they're not a pet. So, okay. Um, I hope if you have a sincere interest in reading these guys or learning more about them, like in a research setting, like as a, as a graduate student or somebody like that who wants to learn about the differences between arboreal and uh, fossorial rats and about the, the, different, the differences in their behavior in their um, social structures and things like that, these guys are less, they're less social uh, than Norway rats. They tend to be more, um, uh, more solitary animals because they're arboreal. They don't live in tunnels in, in big, you know, in, in like, a, like a big, uh, uh, I'm, I want to say herd, but colony. colony. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna live in a big colony uh, you know, with a bunch of other rats in a little tunnel where they all have to get along. If these guys don't get along with their neighbor, they just go find another tree. That's easy. Um, so uh, they are not going to have the same, they don't have the same social hierarchies as Norway rats do. They, they all consider themselves to be the alpha. None of them want to be the beta, you know. So either they get along and they're friends or they're not, okay? You're not gonna have a situation where one is gonna bully the other and dominate it and then the other one will just submit and say, oh, okay, that's fine, you're the boss, I'll do what you say. No, even a little roof rat will still wanna, you know, uh, will, st will still wanna have his own independence and uh, pride or whatever right that you know the then a bigger one so i mean that's tough if you're a little roof rat and you don't want to submit to your bigger you know cage mate that's going to be a a bad life for you um all right so um and and so what does that mean you know it's i mean those experiments where they've uh tried to look for altruistic rat behavior where one rat rescues the other rat and all that Will roof rats do that? I don't know. Nobody's ever tried. We don't know. Um, all the other things that you've seen them try with, with normal rats to demonstrate their social and other behavior, what will happen if you try that with a roof rat? I don't know. Somebody should try it because they're just as intelligent. They're very closely related to Norway rats. But uh, they're a different species, and they have a, they evolved to live in a different habitat. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's enough for now. I I hope that if any of you have a sincere interest in getting a rat from us for the you know reasons I've outlined, that this makes you excited and makes you want to contact us. So. So go ahead and DM me or, or reply in the comments that you're interested and we will hook you up and uh, you can definitely get as many of these guys as you need and as you want from us. And we will not charge you a single penny uh, for adopting them. And they, by the way, we have actually tested them for zoonotic diseases and they are healthy. So you don't have to worry about having these guys in your colony or in your lab. Uh, they are, they are disease-free and healthy and, uh, and ready to go. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye.